Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is model and design aluminum structures in RFM 6 and RSTAP 9. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the Dluba software company. For instance, the Dluba website, the webinars, yeah, customer projects, and so on. I've been working for the Dluba software company for 12 years. And yeah, I will be the moderator today. The presenter will be Sonia and Lucas will help me answering your questions, yeah, but they can introduce themselves. I would also like to welcome you to today's webinar. My name is Sonia von Bloh. I have been working for Drubal Software for about nine years now and I mainly work in support. Yeah, hello also from my side. My name is Lucas. I'm working for Global for 11 years and I'm working in the quality management department with the focus on the interfaces and steel design. Okay. Um, thank you for your introduction. Yeah, you can ask questions via the control panel on the right side of your screen. You can enter a short question here and Lucas and me will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar, because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at global.com. Okay, then I switch off my webcam that you can see the full screen. To the agenda today, first point is the creation of an alum aluminum structure such an facade structure on the right side of the screen. Now that's the model today. After the creation, we'll follow the load input and the combinatorics. Then Sonia will do the, or the design of the structure according to Eurocode 9 and the evaluation of results and the report yeah, the documentation in the printout report. Okay, then I hand over the screen to Sonia and that she can start. As my colleague already told you, I will show you today the creation and design of an aluminum bullion and transom facade. For this, I first create a new model and name it webinar. And I choose a type of model 3D. In the add-ons tab, I then select the add-ons that I want to use in my model, a green dot in front of the add-on indicates that a license is currently available for it. An orange or blue dot indicates that the add-on can only be used in demo mode or as a trial version. I select the aluminum design add-on here. Then I go um, to the standards tab and here I can specify the standards that are to be used for the load combination and load wizards as well for the aluminum uh, design. Here I choose the national annex from Germany. Also for aluminum design. Next um, to the European standards, we have also implemented other standards like the American standard ADM for the aluminum design. I use a line grid as an aid to modeling the mullion transom facade. The intersection points of the line grid represent snap points for the modeling and thus facilitate the creation of the structure. To create such a line grid, I open the navigator data and then I go to new line grid and here 
um, I uh, choose the global coordinate system, um, but I can also use a custom coordinate system if I want to. Various types of coordinate systems are available, such as the Cartesian coordinate system or a cylindrical coordinate system, and I use the Cartesian type today. I choose the zero point as the insertion point. You can influence the display of the line grid via the options. The line grid is supposed to be displayed in the overall view. That's why I um, activate the check blocks include in view show home model. I also uh, want to lock the line grid so um, that I can't accidentally move this. And for this, um, this checkbox is here activated. I then define the coordinates of the line grid in the line grid tab and the type spans for uh, entering regular line grids. Is, um, this is for entering uh, regular line grids or um, there's also another input type. It's um, the input type coordinates um, where you can enter the coordinates. Furthermore, I can choose uh, whether the line grid should be generated in the positive or negative direction of the respective axis. I choose here for the x direction positive. Then I define my spans and uh, this is 0 0.4 meter and I have this three times then 1.2 meter, 3.4, 1.2. For the line grid in Z direction, I choose the direction negative, and then I define my spans. It's 0 0.65. Two point nine, one point thirty five, two point twenty five, and zero point sixty five, and then I click on OK. I can't edit now the line grid in the working window because I locked it but I can unlock it if I choose um, the corresponding um, function for it. And this is this function here. Uh, if I unlock it, then I can also move or copy the language like other ob objects. In order for the line grid to be snapped, the corresponding object snap must be activated. For this, I open the object snap. And here, the checkbox line grids is already activated so that the line grids will be snapped. So this is OK in this case. Now I can start entering the model. And first, I define the cross section. The cross section is a special cross section that I previously created in our section. And I would now show you this cross section in our section. For this, I go to the base data dialog. And here, I have chosen the analysis method thin walled analysis. And I've activated the option effective aluminum section for the calculation of effective aluminum sections. The selection of the analysis method or the standard is irrelevant when using the R section cross section in RFM. You can select the analysis method in RFM regardless of what is set in R section. I will show you this later in RFM. 
elements have been defined to uh, enable the classification and calculation of the effective cross-section. This means that the subpanels that are required for this are also available. I now import this cross-section into RFM. For this, I go back to RFM and open the new section dialog. Then I choose the section and the thin walled model option is activated because the thin walled analysis method was defined in our section. But I can also disable this option and then the gross cross sectional values are calculated using the finite element method. If this option is not available for input, then no elements have been defined for this cross section in our section. In the subpanel tab, you can see the generated subpanels of the cross section for checking purposes. And I click here. Okay, I'll enter the mullions first. For this, I create a new member and the mullions are of the type beam and they are rotated by 270 degree. Then I create all my mullions. Before entering the beams, I check that the connect lines member function is activated. Then I enter the transoms and the transoms are also rotated by 270 degrees and um, they have a hinge on uh, both sides. For this, I activate the hinges and then I go to the top hinges and create a new hinge type. Um, the transoms have a member start and member end hinge about the Y and Z axis. So I choose these two hinges. And I click on OK, and then I can enter my transoms. I now define the supports. I also split these members because I want to create a support in the middle of the members. So I choose the function divide members via distance. And here I define the distance from the member start. Now I can create the supports in my structures. And I assign the hinged support to the node here in the left corner. And I create an additional support with um, UY and UZ and BZ and assign it to the nodes. Awesome. 
Io. Then I need another support. And this is only here in a UI direction. I select the nodes here. There's also the possibility to show the whole model in this window for controlling purposes. I can also show here the numbering. Then I need an additional support and I assign it to the node here on the top left. Okay, the model has been created so far that I can now create the load cases. The load case self weight is generated automatically. The active self weight checkbox is already activated here so that the self weight of the structure is automatically generated as a load. In the static analysis settings list, you can select which calculation theory should be used to analyze the load case. Analysis types are already preset for this. I have here first order, second order and large deformation. I choose here first order. The action category is important for the superposition. The partial safety factors and combination factors are stored in it. I choose here permanent. When I click here on OK. Furthermore, the glass weight should be defined in this load case. The weight of the glass is applied as concentrated load via the blocking points in the transom and the block recess is 15 centimeters in my model. From the dimension and the area weight of the glass, I first calculate the concentrated load. For the lower pane here, um, that would be 2.4 meters multiplied by 0 0.75 meters multiplied by the basis weight of the glass that might be 0 0.3 kilonewton, kilonewton per square meter. Half of the concentrated load must now be applied to each of the two blocking points on the transom. For this, I define a new member load and I choose here the load distribution concentrated. Then I define the load magnitude and this is 2.4 multiplied by 0 0.65 multiplied by 0 0.3 divided by two. I have this also on the second point. And then I have to define the load distance. The load distance, as I already told you, is 15 centimeters. For point B, this would be 2.4 minus twice the 15 centimeters. The glass load acts on the front of the cross section so that I define an eccentricity for the glass load. I go here to the top force eccentricity and this eccentricity is 120 millimeters in relation to the shear center. Now I assign this load to this transom and um, 
I would now have to calculate and apply these glass loads for each pane. This is a very time consuming process. So I have created a script for this that generates these loads. With scripting, I can create the topology, the load cases and the loads, among other things. However, you cannot read results, access external files, start a calculation, open or close files or communicate with other applications such as Excel. The programming language is JavaScript. The scripts are managed in the script manager that you can see here on the right and additional directories and scripts can be created in this script manager. This is possible directly in Windows or via the context menu. If I right click here on um, the script, I can create here a new script or a new folder. You also have the option of creating a simple input dialog. This can be created with a XML file that is in the same directory and has the same name as the JavaScript file. For the creation of script files or the input dialog, you only need an editor like Notepad++. In order for the script file and the input dialog to be open in Notepad++, it must be set in Windows that JavaScript and XML files are to be open with the Notepad++ by default. I can open or create the input dialog via the context menu properties. And I will do this now and I show you an image of the input dialog here on the left. <clears throat> Here with the um, variable name is to be defined with argument name. You can use this variable then in the script file. Furthermore, uh, the standard value um, has to be defined with default value. You have defined one for the load case. You can see this here. This is a default value one. And with label name, um, you can define the designation that is displayed in the input dialog. This is here load case number. You can see this in this input dialog here on the top. I will now open uh, the script file and I will briefly explain the algorithm. So I go here to edit and here um, I initially just read the horizontal members into an array. Then I sort um, the horizontal members in the array, array uh, first by their set coordinate and then by their x coordinate. The horizontal members are now sorted above the other in the fields. Now I can define the glass height from the distance between the members and the um, glass width from the length of the members. And thus I can calculate the glass loads and apply them to the members. I will now create the glass loads by running the script. For this I have to double click on this and then I can um, change here the standard values. I can change here the load case where uh, the loads will be created. 
uh, then I can change the glass weight and so on. But I just run the script now. And now you can see the glass loads have been created. It's the same like I created them manually. <clears throat> the self weight load uh, case is thus complete. Um, furthermore, transom loads must be taken into account. And to do this, I create another load case, a new load case, and I name this uh, transom loads. in direction of fall. I assign here the action category imposed loads category B for office areas. Then I click here on OK. Horizontal loads on safety barriers are regulated in chapter 6.4 of the uh, Euro code 1991 part 11. They depend on the categories according to their use. For category B2, the horizontal load is one kilonewton per meter. I define this horizontal load one in meter above the supports. And to do this, I first create the node one meter above the supports. For this, I select the nodes that I want to copy. And then I choose the move copy function, create a copy one meter above the supports. And then I click on OK. The supports were also generated, so I modify the nodes and I deactivate the checkbox support. To generate the transom load, I use the load wizard. The load wizard can be found in the navigator data. And here I use the load wizard member loads from free line load. Here I have to choose the load direction. This is in global y axis. And I have to define the load magnitude. This is one kilonewton per meter. And I pick now the nodes. I have this load also one meter above this support. For this, I copy the load and I only have to change the nodes. It's also possible to show these loads separately. For this, I choose this option, display separately, and then you can see the load application on the beams. According to the German National Annex, the transom loads are also to are also to be applied in the opposite direction with 50%, but at least 0.5 kilonewton per meter. For this, I copy the load case two. So I choose here, copy load cases, and I only change here the load case name. This is uh, transom loads in opposite direction. The loads contained in the load case were also copied, so I only have to change the load parameters. For this, I open the loads 
and then I change the load magnitude to minus 0 0.5 and here also minus 0 0.5 kilonewton per meter. See here the loads. Furthermore, I have to define a load case wind pressure. I will do this. I name it wind pressure. And action category is wind. Then I create a surface load, also with a load wizard. And I use the load wizard, wizard member loads from area load. Here I choose the load distribution uniform and I choose the coordinate system local Z to apply the load perpendicular to the area load plane. I define here 0 0.7 kilonewton per square meter as the load magnitude. In the geometry tab, I define the area load plane by picking the corresponding nodes in the work window. It's also possible to display um, this load separately. To do this, I choose the corresponding option. Then I have to create also a wind suction. And for this, I copy the load case wind pressure. Name it wind suction. And then I have to change the load magnitude. It acts here in minus Z. So it's minus 0 0.75 kilonewton per square meter. Okay, this completes the input of the load cases so that I can make settings for the combinatorics. And for this, I open the top actions. And the action category that you can see here corresponds to the category of the corresponding load cases. The action category type um, controls how the load cases of the action are taken into account in the superposition. The imposed loads should not act together. So I choose here alternatively. This is already set by default for the wind loads. You can see this action type is here alternatively also for the wind loads. The standard described how the actions are to be combined. EN 1990 requires design of the ultimate limit state and the serviceability limit state for which specific combination rules apply. These rules are implemented in the program for design situations are created by default based on the standard you have chosen in the base data. I deactivate here the frequent and quasi-permanent loads because I don't need it here. And I want to reduce the number of my generated load combinations so that I define load case relationships for all design situations. So I choose my design situation, then I activate this checkbox, consider inclusive, exclusive load case and create a new relationship. Here I go to exclusive load cases 
and then I define that my wind pressure should not combine with uh, the transom loads in direction of fall and my wind suction should never be combined with my transom loads in opposite direction. By default, the uh, com load combinations are generated according to the second order theory, but it's also possible to um, choose um, the linear combination, but I leave here the uh, default. Then I go to the load combinations and the load combinations are now automatically generated according to the combination criteria of the design situations and the settings for load cases and combinations are now complete so that I can define the design properties. I would like to design the mullions as one component to do this, I have to create sets of member for them. For this, I select the millions via an object selection. And the object selection, I found it, find it in the navigator data in a guide objects. Here I create a new object selection. I want to select members that are parallel to a vertical member. So I choose here a vertical member and I can define also here a name for it and I name it Malians. Now all vertical members are selected so that I can now create my set of members. For this I choose here create member set and now seven set of members are created. In order to be able to design the set of members and not the individual members, I activate the design properties on the set of members. For this, I select all my set of members and open the edit dialog. And here I activate the design properties. Now I have to define the design configuration. Um, I'm looking at the ultimate configuration first. For this I click on modify and here you can make various settings that affect the aluminum design. For example, you can use alternative values in the design by activating the corresponding checkbox. Today, I only want to do cross-section checks, so I turn off the stability design. And I click here on OK. And now I open the serviceability configuration and in the serviceability configuration, the limit values to be checked for the design can be specified. The deflection limits are defined as a fraction of the reference length. The distinction is made between the cases of a beam supported on both sides. Um, this is here and the cantilever. You can find here the limit criteria. EM13813 specifies limit values depending on the category and the spans. These limit values must be always agreed with the client. I create a serviceability configuration for spans less than or equal to 
3,000 3, millimeters and define here for the beams the characteristic configuration L divided by 200. I can give this configuration also a name and I define here span length less or equal than 3000 millimeters. I create another serviceability configuration for spans between 3000 millimeters and 7500 millimeters. I name this configuration span length 3000 millimeters and I define here L divided by 300. Then I click on OK. The spans of the millions are in the range between 3000 millimeters and 7500 millimeters. So I select here the configuration number two. And then I go to the design supports. And for the aluminum design, the beam type is derived from the defined design supports. If I define a support on both sides of the member, the type is interpreted as beam supported on both sides. If a support is only defined on one member side, the member type is interpreted as cantilever. Depending on the type of beam, the limit values defined in the serviceability configuration are used. First, I define the design supports at the start and end of the set of members. For this, I create a new support and the set of members is supported in both direction at its beginning and at its end. And for this, I activate here the support and Z axis and I also activate the support and Y axis and I name this Y and Z. Okay. I choose this for the member start and member end, member set end. Um, the design supports also take on the function of segmenting the member for the deflection design. Such design supports can be arranged also at intermediate nodes of the member and the mullion is supported here in the middle. And for this, I have here the node sequence three, um, where I want to define also a support. For this, I choose here a new design support because this is only supported in uh, Z direction and not in Y direction. Okay, I name this Z. Choose your only support and Z axis, and then I click on OK. Then I set the local axis Z as the Z direction, check direction, and click here on OK. Now with the help of an object selection, I select the beams that have a length of less than or equal to 3000 millimeters. For this, I open the object selection again. New object, object selection. I want to select members. I give here the name. Beams with L less or equal 3000 millimeters. 
and the members are parallel to a horizontal member. I choose it here. And the members have a length less or equal to three, uh, three meters. I click on OK and then I define the aluminum design properties for this. I edit the selected members, go to the top design configuration, serviceability configura configuration for span length less or equal 3000 millimeter is already chosen, so this is okay. Then I can go to the design supports and deflection and the beams are um, supported in Y and Z direction on member end and member start. So I choose here in Y and Z. Check direction is local axis uh, Z and uh, the deflection of each beam uh, due to self-weight alone, this means the deflection in the Y direction would also have to be checked, but today I don't do this check. Okay. Now I select the beams that have a length uh, between three meter and 7.5 meters. So I select these beams and then I assign design, the design configuration. For this, I have to choose the design configuration too. Here yeah, I also have to define the design supports. They are supported in Y and Z on member start and member end. And check direction is local axis Z. All types for the members can be displayed graphically in the work window. You can find this in the navigator display. And here you can find the types for members. And here you can see um, checkboxes for the design supports that you can activate or deactivate. And um, this allows easy checking, checking of the correct assignment and clear documentation in the printout. The, Basic assignments for the aluminum design can also be made on the tables. For this, I choose aluminum design on the tables. The input data and after calculation also, the results are clearly summarized in the tables. And here in top design situation, um, this presents in the um, all design situation are here present in the uh, model here are listed in this table. And here you can decide whether and how a specific design situation should be taken into account for the aluminum design. The design situation were formed based on the selected standard for the load case classification. The types are automatically assigned to the types um, of the selected design code. However, I can assign uh, this differently if necessary, but I leave this as it is. Then I go to the top uh, objects to design, all object types present in the model and suitable for design in the add-on are listed as one row on this table and by entering an object number in the removed from design column, you can spe specifically exclude certain objects from the design and the 
column to be designed mm, contains all objects for which the add-on carries out the design. Here some um, members are deactivated for the design. Reason is that these members are um, in the member sets and I design the member sets here and that's why they are here deactivated in the members. <clears throat> the cross sections fall into class four and in the customer version, it's not yet possible to design class four cross sections. So I carried out the calculation in a pre-release version. The functionality should also be available in the customer version in, in the future. So I open here the pre-release version and after the calculations, the results are available here in tabular form. Um, you can see here an overview where um, warning messages or undesignable messages are displayed. And you can choose here also the design ratios on members in a tabular form. If uh, you want to see the details of the design, then you have to double click on the corresponding line and um, this opens um, the design with all uh, values and um, with all formulas here displayed in the right of the window. <clears throat> Uh, further detailed graphics are also available if you click here uh, on this button. Then you can see the result diagrams in section and you can see here also the effective section and you can see here for the web that uh, the cross section is reduced. Um, so it's a class four section, but you can also see, see this, that this is a class four section here on the table. Um, you can also display um, all results graphically in the work window. And for this, you have uh, to choose a navigator results, the aluminum design. And you have, you, you have um, several possibilities. You can display the ratio envelope, the maximum of all design checks, or it's possible um, to display only the serviceability limit state. Um, in the bottom, you have also the possibility um, to show the units and so on. <clears throat> Finally, I would like to show you the documentation. The documentation is done in the printout report. You can include aluminum design types, input data, and aluminum design result tables in the printout report manager. To do this, I create the new printout report. And here on this list, it's possible to choose uh, the items that you want to put in your documentation. I choose here all, then I reverse the selection, invert the selection because I only want to choose my aluminum design for the documentation. And here I activate the corresponding checkboxes. I want to have the design ratio on members by design situation in my 
print out report, then I click on save and show. And the print out report will then be generated and opened. Yeah, I have um, my uh, my uh, results in tabular form. It's also possible to print graphics to the printout report. To do this, I go here to um, this function, print graphics to the printout report. You see a preview here. In, um, on the right, you can also rotate this picture if you want to. I will rotate it by 270 degrees. It's also possible to uh, scale this graphic picture if you want to. And I now want to save it and show it in the printout report and now you can see okay there's also a picture in it <clears throat> with uh, the documentation i have now come to the end of my presentation i now give the floor back to andreas okay sonia thank you for this presentation i think it was a good example to show all the features in the aluminum design in RFM6. Yeah, it's also valid uh, for um, RFM, um, RSTAB 9. Yeah, it's a structure uh, that you could also design with RSTAB 9. Okay, at the end of the webinar, I would like to show you where you can find the recording and the provided files. I Turn uh, hold back the screen just a moment. So now you should see my screen. That's our website, lubal.com. And under news and events, you can find our webinars. That's today's webinar. Now you can see also the webinars of the future and the already presented webinars. You can select here upcoming and past webinars for example we record all our webinars and if you click on today's webinar you, know, you will find the recording here maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow and you can already download the model javascript and xml files of the webinar uh, and you can go through the webinar with the recording and the provided files afterwards. Yeah, if you don't have got already RFM6 and RSTAB9, you can use the free trial version for both. You can click on the link and you can see the RFM6 and RSTAB9 program. Yeah, they contain all add-ons yeah, and you can test the versions for 90 days. Also, our section is available and our wind. Okay, that should be all for today's webinar. Maybe a last hint when you leave the webinar where is a small survey. Yeah, it takes it take you only one minute. Yeah, just answer the questions or score us you know, the worst score is one the best score is five would be very fine if you take the time okay i say thank you for your attention thanks to sonia for the nice presentation thanks to lucas for the, your help answering the questions i wish all a nice rest of the day and bye-bye.